Excuse me, may I have everyone's attention, please? Excuse me, may I have everyone's attention, please? We're running late. We're, we're getting ready to start in a few minutes. Can I ask everyone that's on the front row, can you all please move to this side over here? This is for the BMU staff and president and Dr. Jackie Thompson and whoever she has with us. So I'm going to ask that you all please move over to the other side. This is our, our, our row right here. Whoever's purse and Bible this is on the front row, I need you to move it. That's where the president sits, please. Please move it. Thank you. All right. We're going to accommodate you all as best as we can. Yeah. Okay. All right. of God, Romans chapter 10, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved, for I bear record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, for their being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on the wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall the sin into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, 
believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto them that call upon the name of the Lord. Here it is again, y'all. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they, male and female, hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we're grateful. We're blessed. We're privileged to be in the house of the Lord on night three. And tonight is history making night yes! because in 78 yes! years, there's never been a woman to stand to declare the riches of God. And so we thank you for Alan Temple being here with us tonight. We thank you for the Bay Area being with us tonight. We thank you that Dr. Jackie Thompson shall stand to preach tonight. And we're going to go crazy in this place waiting on the manifestation we sit here we stand here waiting with tiptoe anticipation on how god shall move tonight we thank you for ears to hear we thank you for eyes to see we thank you for hands to lift up we thank you for legs to stand on god you've been good to us and we're gonna bless your name and i will bless the lord at all times and his presence shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt the name of the Lord together. For the Lord is great. The Lord is good. The Lord is a God above all gods. In him we live, we move, we have our well-being. If it had not been for God on our side, we don't know where we would be. So God, I thank you for every woman in here. I thank you for every man. I thank you for every child in this place, God. We shall lift you higher and go higher and higher and higher. It's in the marvelous, the, the, the name of the Messiah we pray. And we clap our hands and say amen. Come on, somebody put your hands together as we receive our praise team. Come on, come on, keep putting your hands together for Jesus. Anybody glad about the name of Jesus? Anybody glad that he died for you? Is anybody glad that he rose for you? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. We've come to bless the Lord on tonight. If you don't know this song, it's okay, but I'm going to ask for everybody to stand up while we get ready for praise and worship on tonight.
He's worthy. 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 Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He saved my soul. Yes, he is. He saved my life. Yes, he is. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Y'all ain't come to have no church tonight. the way 
show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt should pay from the cross to the grave, to the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to show the way from the earth to the cross. Baby leading praise and worship. Y'all give it up for Marissa Peters. That's my baby. Amen. I'm bringing now First Lady D. Harris to come and bring greetings. We're so delighted to see everybody in here. Come on, Sister. Sister D. Harris is coming uh, at this time right now. Amen. The air going to start working in a minute, y'all. Listen. It's enough people in here to make a Tarzan movie tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody up in this place. How many of us came out to have a good time tonight? I don't know about you, but the presence of the Lord is already, the presence of the Lord is already in this place. Praise God. First of all, we would just like to welcome you. We know you felt welcome when you came in the door, of course, but we want to reiterate the welcome again. You're welcome once, you're welcome twice. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Now give yourself a hand. Right now, the program calls for choir selection. Let's welcome the women's choir. Amen, everybody. 
Put your hands together for the revival tonight, everybody. How y'all feeling tonight? I said, how y'all feeling tonight?
just explain some what's going on they've been singing together for four years they've been practicing since the end of January and they carry on like this in choir rehearsal so this is just the overflow <laughs>
right, I'm gonna give y'all 20 seconds. Come on. One, two, three, go! Second, give me 20 more. to carry on like this after Dr. Thompson get finished preaching tonight. I'm bringing for our civic moment uh, Come on, nephew. Stop, Calvin. Stop, Adam. Stop. 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 Y'all hard-headed. All right. Sister Brent, y'all stop. Sister Brentley Grisham is coming at this time. She is one of our leaders in Oakland, and she is the one leading to recall the DA. Hey. Praise the name of our God. She's coming. She has a few moments. Receive Brenda Grisham at this time. Amen. Amen. First giving out. Can you hear me? First giving out to God to my pastor, the Reverend Jeffrey Carton, and my I'm Pastor Emeritus, Reverend C.T. Johnson. I'm a member of the 7th Avenue Missionary Baptist Church, where I'm the minister of music. I've been serving there for 58 years. Amen. Woohoo! Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 58 years. Um, on today, I'm here for the civic moment. Um, my son, Christopher Lavelle Jones, was murdered December 31st here in the city of Oakland. For the last 13 years, I have been an advocate for the families of homicide victims. For 13 years, I have diligently stood in the gap because nobody else would. I am the principal officer of SAFE. I am the leader of the recall of District Attorney Pamela Price. I am. I'm here today for, it's just going to take me a minute, as a leader of people of different nationalities. If you've never lost a child, you never know what they feel. A couple of weeks ago, a coalition of ministers stood at Jeffrey's and did not stand for the victims in our city. You can't stand for the politicians without standing for the people. 
And I'm here today. I would be less of a leader if I would not bring these mothers that have lost their children, lost their husbands into a place that I know God can give them some peace. And so I invited the families of homicide victims here tonight. You need to see what I'm fighting for. You need to see. TV is one thing. But I tell you, I'm up at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning talking to 12 mothers. They're crying. The murderers of their children are being released. Back on the street. That's dangerous for them young men, and it's dangerous for the community. But what I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something, and I want you to hear me good. I need y'all to pray for Pamela Price and pray for me. You see, I have a security guard right here. I've had to move my children. Somebody just broke the windows out of my office. People have come to my office with guns. But let me tell you something about that. I'm standing for these people. And I'm going to continue because God's going to take care of them. But I brought them to a place where I know no matter what their nationality, no matter whether you know them or not, I know that they will feel something. Or today, Sister Jacqueline. I've never heard you speak before. I've heard your father speak. And I said, y'all need to come and hear her. Because I feel, and this is me, I feel that this group of people right here can give them something that they need. And like I said, if you've never lost a child, you will never understand. If somebody, if you've never had somebody murder your child, murder your husband, murder your sister, murder your brothers, you will never understand what these families go through on a day-to-day basis. Walking into a courtroom. I walk in the courtrooms with these families. I look, go to the police department and look at them losing their children, them getting shot. I didn't sign up for this, but I'm here, and I'm going to stand. And it doesn't matter what you believe. Right now, I'm asking you to stand on the side of the people. You can, you can support Pamela Price all you want to, but today we got a bunch of hurting people in here, people that you don't even know. You don't even know, and I'm just appealing to you guys on this evening to look what's inside yourself. Pray for me, because this is a hard job. On March 5th, I walked up the steps of City Hall and delivered 123,374 signatures, and I only needed 73. So I'm representing that 123,000 citizens of Alameda County as well, and it's a hard job. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for them. I love you, and I'm telling you, I brought you here for a reason. God bless you. God bless you. Um, Can you guys stand? Can you guys stand so they can see who you are? And those that came to support them, I love you too. Amen. All right, Qu- quickly, quickly, uh, we're moving. We want to do our um, recognitions right now. This is Women's History Month. This is Women's History Month, uh, and we are making history now. We are making history now. <clears throat> and so. Um, some people here don't even know we're going to do this. The Baptist Ministers Union, not because I want to give them these. The Baptist Ministers Union want to recognize all of the female funeral directors. We want to recognize in the Bay Area, the funeral directors. All of them couldn't be here, but my sister is here tonight. Uh, and my godmama, one of my god, I got about four, four godmothers in here tonight, but they're in here. So we, we're going to make sure that they get them. They've called me and said they couldn't. But we want to recognize uh, Mrs. Fuchsia. Fuchsia Funeral Home. She don't, she don't drive at night, y'all. She don't, she don't drive at night. Uh, I'm not mad at her. We do live in the Bay Area. Um, we want to recognize um, Renee Spearman, Fuller Funeral Home in uh richmond we want to recognize lydia stewart rose manor in richmond and 
she's here. Uh, my sister is here. I know you look a mess over there, but uh, you, that's my sister, I can say that. But Tori Logan at Grissom Funeral Home in San Lorenzo. She does, how many funerals do you do? She does about 15 funerals a week. And she work a lot with victim of a violent crimes. She is a faithful tithing member of the Victory Baptist Church. And this is my God sister. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's give all of them a hand. All right. Thank you. Love you, girl. All right. I'll make sure the rest of them there. And Brenda, here is yours. We want to recognize Brenda for the work that she do in the community. Brenda Grisha. Where you go? Where she go? She left already? Oh, there she go. I'll come over to you. I'll meet you. I'll meet you. We want to recognize her work, y'all. She works hard. She go to court and don't make a dime doing it. She does it because she loves people. All right. Pastor Curtis Robinson is coming right now. We're moving expeditiously. In my Joe Clark voice, come on, expeditiously. Thank you, Pastor Clark. I mean, thank you, Pastor Peters. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. Keep you. Listen, so this is, again, uh, Women's History Month. And, uh, so I think he may be here, but I did speak with her. And so what this plaque right here says, <clears throat> dedicated service awarded to Gay Player Cobb in recognition of the milestones you've achieved and the accomplishments you've earned Thank you for giving your time with loyalty and dedication. Oakland BMU Citywide 2024, Todd Wheelock, President. Amen. 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 Uh, now, I know that she had to attend Bishop Garrison on our behalf, a uh, Oakland commission for the police department. Amen. She's in that meeting right now discussing the safety of Oakland. Y'all say amen. And man, she gave her husband permission to receive the award. However, he may or may not be here. But nonetheless, come on, put your hands together for Sister Gay Player Club. We'll make sure she gets this. Amen. Amen. We're going to receive our president. You all look comfortable. Just raise your hand as your right hand as a token of respect. Let's receive our president, my president, the president of the Baptist Ministers Union, who have made history tonight, Reverend Todd M. Wheelock. Come on, let's bless the Lord for our president. Bless you, bless you. You may be seated. Let me just begin by saying, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. I think it's good enough to say one more time. To God be <laughs> the glory. Dear hearts, the Lord has blessed us. And this August crowd says that somebody wants to change what the status quo looks like. Too long, it's been one-sided. But I've learned that when you listen to God, God has the right to change you to fit his situation. We're in the midst of a marvelous time. Our theme for this week has been repairing the broken breach. How can the church do ministry if we're segregated? It's entirely too much division. This, this day today shows and says 
that the walls are coming down. But I'm not going to go that far today. I'm just happy to see all of you all. It's, it's a blessing for us to be here. Now, um, we've gone to great lengths to do what we've done and to make this step both financially, mentally, and physically. Because just for me to step out on this alone, I've been ostracized, I've been talked about. I've had preachers tell their churches not to support. They've been negative letters written. I've had negative phone calls. But can I tell y'all something? I ain't never been scared of a good fight. Amen. But I need your help today. I need your help. Because we need to pay our bills. And so I want to get all of that out the way. I need about $8,000 tonight. That ain't no money. That ain't no money. Uh, I need about $8,000 tonight. Now we can do that. We can do that. Don't get scared. Don't get nervous. Uh, I need about $8,000 tonight. Because we've already had Pastor Freddie Haynes to do what he did. And uh, we... We paid him on faith. Y'all might catch it on the way out the door. You know, you know how you got to write that check and got to beat it to the bank? Don't act like y'all don't know nothing about that. You know. But we paid him on faith. And I want to be a blessing to Dr. Jacqueline Thompson tonight. And we have other expenses that we've got to have. Now, this is women's night. I said this is women's night. You know, any other time, women, y'all be trying to talk back to me. Y'all kind of quiet right now. I don't need y'all quiet now. We talking about the money now. Uh, Sister Wheelock has sent out letters to some of you ladies' churches and all that kind of stuff. And we're asking each woman, if you would, sacrifice $50. Now, that ain't no money. If you go get your nails done and your feet done. I mean, that ain't probably half of some of the stuff, you know. And if you go get your hair done and you buy some hair, that's even more, so. But look, look, we need to get this and so there are the women here, and um, men are never going to let women outdo them. Let, let me do this. Let me do this. I want all of the male and female pastors and preachers to stand. All of the male and female pastors and preachers would just stand. Come on, let's give it up. I see Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Brandon back there on the back wall. Amen. God bless you, man. God bless you. Y'all may be seated. I'm going to ask those of you brothers who can, brothers who can, brothers who can, men, if you can, sacrifice $100. $100. Thank you so much. Thank you, brothers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Ambrose, thank you, man. God bless you. 
God bless you. Praise his name. Dr. Brandon uh, is going to give $1,000 tonight. Thank you, man. God bless you. Thank you. Bishop Keith Clark sends $250. I've got from Pastor Elliot Ivey $300. Rock of True Church, $100. Thank you, McKnight. Thank you, man. Cool cat. My basketball buddy, $100. Man, next time I play you, man, I'm going to lighten up on you, all right? All right. Bishop Sean Teal, $300. Thank you, man. I got, I got uh, money from the New Hope Church up here. New Hope Church, $350. All you got to do is ask for it. All you got to do is ask for it. gave me this raggedy check, but it's $200, though. We good. I keep it. It's all right. We going to cash it? <laughs> she going to come up here and tell me, I kind of tore it up. You know, I kind of tore it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Green, thank you, man. $100. God bless you. God bless you. Now, now what we're going to do is, instead of us moving... Thank you, man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Here's what I want to do. It's a lot of us in here. It's a whole lot of us in here. And I don't, I really, I, I, I really, I really want us to do this orderly. I really want us to do this orderly. And, um, it's a whole lot of us in here. So here's what I need you brothers to do. It's going to take too much time to pass the plate. So I need my ushers. Ushers, I need y'all to get up and be usherly. Ushers, I need y'all to be usherly. We may have to ask you in this center aisle to stand for just a moment. All right. We got to come down through there. We got to come down through there. Our ushers are maneuvering very quickly, not conversationally, very quickly. those of you who are online, we do exercise the Give Lafay app. Go to Antioch Baptist Church and give it that way. The Minister's Union will get it. Thank you so much. Mount Zion gave $200. And, and Pastor Kenny Anson gives five hundred dollars. Thank you, man. William Chapel Church. Thank you, man. God bless you. Bless you. Come on, come on, come on. 
you so much. God bless you. My little cousin Michelle up in here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Stand on this side, please. Start at the rear, please. God bless you, Reverend. Thank you so much, man. God bless you. If you have a card and don't have cash, we got a young lady standing over here. We'll take all cards. All right, thank y'all so much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I see Sister Cope in the house. God bless you. Thank you so much. so much. Thank you so much. God bless you, ladies. Got one dancing around to give her money. God loves a cheerful giver. Shall we stand on this side, please? Start at the rear, at the rear. Just about three. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. 
bless you. I see y'all over there. God bless you, Reverend and Sister Green. Come on, y'all keep on singing. Oh, okay, keep going. Okay. I'm just acknowledging folk, that's all. Oh. Sister Barbara Hopkins, I see you, girl. You're wearing that hat, girl. You're wearing that hat, girl. I see you, Lolo.
old school. We are soldiers. We are soldiers. I know you know that man. Preaching time. It's preaching time. Let let me do this. Let 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 me do this. Um, we have before us today what I consider one of God's best preachers. Now um, I've admired her preaching and her pulpit prowess for a long time. I have a confession to make, though. I, 
I was going to get her to preach for us on something some years ago. And I let some people talk me out of it. But I thank God for a second chance. And so today, I could go through all of our accolades. I could go through all of that. The most important accolade is she's a woman of God. And a gospel preacher. And so... When the Lord gave us this vision to do this, the first name that popped in my head was Dr. Jacqueline Thompson. Because God clearly said she's the woman for this hour. She's the woman that's going to share on this level for the first time in the history of the Baptist Ministers Union. I, I want us to stand. I want us to stand and receive our preacher, our woman of God. She's a bad sister. I think I'm going to say it one more time. She's a bad sister. Let's receive Pastor Jacqueline Thompson.
mighty, mighty good God. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. He's a good God. Has been good to you. He's been mighty good to me. Oh, yeah. Mighty good God. Here's what he's done. He's been so good. He brought me in my mind. He put food on my table. I know God is able. Has it been good to you? He's a badass. He's a badass. He fights every battle. He's so good. Mighty good to me. Has it been good to you? Hey! Yeah! You better bless his name. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know we've been here for a while, and some of you don't know me, not even online. All you need to know is I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, if I got anybody that's been kept by Jesus, come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. Because despite what you've been through, the Lord is good. And he's good all the time. Pastor Peters, I would have fainted had I not believed I would live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And if you don't believe it, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. I promise you, he's going to strengthen your heart. Come on, citywide. We put our hands together. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, while you're still clapping, help me celebrate the gracious president of the Baptist Ministers Union. Amen. We thank God for Dr. Todd Wheelock. We thank God for his courage, for his vision, and for him stepping out. Come on, let's encourage him. And let's let him know if you've been talked about, you in good company. Come on, keep clapping. He has a wonderful cabinet that we celebrate tonight. We thank God for my friend and my brother. We praise God for Pastor Marty Peters. There's only one. Come on, help me celebrate Reverend Curtis Robinson, General Secretary. Come on, keep clapping for all of these wonderful preachers that are in the house. For these choirs that have ministered unto us. For our ushers, for everyone who has served, it is a blessing to be alive. You may have your seat, some trust in horses. And some trust in chariots. But I learned a long time ago, you might as well just trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run therein and be saved. I thank God for another day of life. Because I recognize I don't wake up because I've been so good. But somebody told me morning by morning. Brand new, that don't mean nothing to you if you got mercy stored up somewhere. But some of us use our mercy every day. And if it wasn't new every morning, we would have been gone a long time ago. And so I count it an honor and a privilege to be here with you. Thank you for extending this gracious invitation. I dare not stand without honoring all of the wonderful ladies in red that are here tonight on this historic Women's Night. Thank you so much for your presence and your support. I am blessed to pastor the greatest church. This side of glory. I know it's a lot of good churches. I got the greatest church. The Allen Temple Baptist Church of Oakland, deep East Oakland, California. I thank God so much for your presence tonight. I love you and I am grateful for you. I'm honored to call the name of Dr. J. Alfred Smith Sr., who is our pastor emeritus. He is also a past president of the Baptist Ministers Union. I stand here and can feel the spirit of my father the Reverend Dr. M.T. Thompson, who is the pastor emeritus of the Berkeley Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church that is in the building. He is also a former president of the Baptist Ministers Union. And the reason this is a full circle moment is because he won on the platform that he would never admit a woman. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. But I am grateful to God to say that he was my biggest supporter. So when I say you are in good company, to be in the company of a Dr. J. Alfred Smith Sr. and a Dr. M.T. Thompson, you are in excellent company. And we know that God is going to bless you. There are so many people here tonight. If I call names, I'm going to get in trouble. But I must acknowledge, y'all know, Dr. Thompson had girls. And so all of my sisters are here tonight. I'm grateful for them. Sister Maxine Thompson, Angel is here, Michelle is here. I thank God so many. The voice of the Bay Area, some of y'all don't remember this because we don't, we don't really have radio no more, but back in the day when we had radio, KDIA, somebody, KSOL, 
We wasn't even studying KMEL. We listened to KSOL 107 point. Talk to me in the building. But there was a voice that when you heard that voice, you knew what day it was. That was the voice of Dorothy Stanton. And so I am grateful for her presence tonight. For so many pastors, friends and brothers of every reformation, I see you, I love you, and I appreciate you. And if you pray for me now, I'm going to say my Easter speech and get out the way. For those of you who don't know, I'm the second vice president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, the first woman elected to serve in the history of the convention. But I serve under my district president, so we thank God for Dr. Kenneth Anderson, who is here today, the pastor of Williams Chapel. He is the president of our district. And so, we're grateful for the media ministry. If you have your Bibles, if you have an iPhone, iPad, we know it will be shown. But when I prayed and asked the Lord what he would have me to share on this hour, I got this rather obscure text. But I believe if you pray right now, that God can take something that's rather obscure and use it to bless our lives. We acknowledge the presence of those who have been victims of violence. We are grateful for their presence tonight. And to Sister Brenda for the invitation. We're going to the book of Genesis. Chapter 26. I'm going to read for your hearing verses 17 through verses 22. This is the New International Version. We thank God it's on the screens. If you have it with you, keep your Bibles there. But the Bible says, so Isaac moved away from there. And he encamped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father, Abraham which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. He gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But when the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, the water is ours, so he named the well Isaac because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well. So he named it Sitna, because they quarreled over that one also. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. So he named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in this land. I know you don't understand it. But I like it like that. So I need you to just look at your neighbor and tell them there's victory in the valley. If they don't say nothing to you, they're the wrong neighbor. Turn around and tell them there's victory in the valley. Come on as you take your seat. Find one more person. Point your finger. Say there's victory in the valley. to admit tonight, and I'm a mover, which I don't usually do, but I, I'm, I'm going to take them off tonight. <laughs> President Willock, I stand before you completely amazed by the faithfulness of God. Despite what we go through, despite the news that we might hear, despite what we might experience, God has been faithful. And you don't really have to take my word for it. I, I believe that if you just take a look back over your life, that you might draw the same conclusion that I have drawn, all I have needed. God's hand has provided. When I think about it, all I can say is great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. But despite the faithfulness of God, I have to be honest that knowing that God is faithful does not make us immune to the challenges of life. That even knowing and believing that God is faithful, we still struggle. 
Well, let me not talk about you. Let me talk about me. Even knowing that God is faithful, there are some things I still struggle with. God is faithful, but I still wonder. God is faithful, but I still question. God is faithful, but I still have to say, Lord, why do you allow some things to turn out the way they turn? Do I have anybody honest enough to say? That even though God is faithful, we struggle to understand some things. Help me understand how we can be okay with people making their bed on the concrete. Help me understand. Knowing that God is faithful, Pastor Peters, does not make us immune from experiencing low places. If you live long enough, you recognize your faith is not a series of mountaintop experiences. But every once in a while, you find yourself in a valley. I got any folk in the building ever been through a valley? I got any folk in the building that ever been discouraged? That ever wondered if God was really God and if God was going to do what God said, God? I need a few folk that ain't ashamed to say, I believe God, but I know what the valley feels. They say the valley is lonely. The valley is isolating. That's where President Willock is. He in the valley. But here's what I've come to know. It's the God I serve. It's not only a God that gives you victories on mountaintops, but is there anybody that knows God can give you a victory right in your... I need a few folk that know God is able to give me a victory even in my valley. You got to be careful. Because when you are in the valley is when the enemy begins to play with your mind and begins to make you think that nothing is ever going to change and makes you believe that it's always going to be like this. That's what they want me to believe, Dr. Anderson, about my city. My city. I know it's other cities in here, but I'm talking about my city. They want us to be scared to leave our houses. They want us to think it's no good thing in Oakland. They want us to think that our city is going to hell. But if I got anybody that knows that there are still good things that occur, I don't need everybody. I need Oakland folk to say there's some good things that come out of Oakland. And you're not going to make me believe that it's over for us. Went to school in Oakland. Went to church in Oakland. My mama had a business in Oakland. Got saved in Oakland. Got called in Oakland. Had my first everything in. And sometimes it's how you talk about a thing. Anybody remember when they asked, does any good thing come out of Nazareth? You know it's Monday, Thursday. We only here because the Savior came out of Nazareth. You got to be careful not to let the enemy run you out of your promised place. Because God is able to bless in low places. Places that they believe are valleys. Because I learned character in Oakland. I learned how to be loyal in Oakland. I learned what it meant to be a friend right here. And we can tell you something about Oakland going to stick together. I'm telling you what I know. Now, East Oakland may not mess with West Oakland, but let Richmond come through.
I see you, rich man. Watch yourself. Watch yo. We will band together so quick. Because sometimes you have to get your victory in a low place. I know you don't think it's possible. Come here, woman with the issue of blood. She couldn't stand up straight and encounter Jesus. It was against the culture. They would have known what it was she was struggling with. So she said, I had to go low. Because had the saints seen me, they would have said I didn't have a right to be here. They would have told me it wasn't woman's night and I ain't got a right to say nothing. But I just slid in low and touched the hem of his. I need some women that don't need nothing but to go low and get to G So the Bible said. In our text, we find Isaac in a valley. He's in a low place. I really want to stay up here, Marty, but I'm coming down. The Bible says that he found himself once again in a famine. His father had experienced a famine. The Bible says when he was in the famine, he went to see King Abimelech, who was the king of Gerar of the Philistines. The Bible says that while he was there, the Lord spoke to him and said, don't go to Egypt. Stay here. And I'm going to bless you here. It messed me up because when Abraham was in a famine, he went to Egypt. And the Lord blessed him in Egypt. But when Isaac was in the famine, the Lord said, don't go to Egypt. Stay right here. Because sometimes in order for God to bless you, you got to break away from what's been done in the past. That just because it was good for the father that came before you don't mean that's how God want to bless you. So the Bible says Isaac stayed in Gerar and he was blessed. Right where he was. Mess me up. Because surely he should be able to follow the traditions of his father. But it's only because he had the courage to step out that God even blessed him. And sometimes the challenge for us is we scared to step out. Because we want people to like us. And we want to get invited to the program. And we want to seat on the front row. But guess what? As long as my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you keep your plaque, keep your certificate. I got my own row. I don't need yours. Don't you know we are only here as a people? Because we descended from people who are willing to step out. When they wouldn't educate us, we built schools. When they wouldn't treat us in hospitals, we built hospitals. When they wouldn't fund us, we built banks. We are only here because our ancestors were not afraid to step out. And they didn't have half of what we have. But the Lord honored him because he stepped out. Because the Bible says... We in a famine. But he planted a seed. And in the same year. He reaped not 30. Not 60. But 100 fold. Y'all told me. That it was a famine. Which means there's a scarcity of food and usually of water. But Isaac planted a seed in a famine with no water and re 
great 100 fold. Anybody know God is able? Didn't Freddie tell you last night to do exceedingly and abundantly above all? You could have asked, think, or imagine, and you worried about your mortgage? So the Bible says he became rich in the valley in a famine. And the Philistines, Mr. Cobb, who had been there the whole time, Isaac knew him. Philistines been here. But when they saw Isaac, got blessed. The Bible said a king got mad. He said, you can't stay here. Be careful what you pray for. Because when God give it to you, they're going to run you out. They're going to tell you they don't want to play on the playground no more. They don't want to be your friend. But guess what? I'm still blessed whether you like me or whether you die. I'm still. That don't change nothing. The king said, here is what he said. He said, Isaac, you are too powerful for me. So you have to leave. Because any oppression is always about power. Because everybody quoting Paul don't believe half of what Paul wrote. It ain't about Bible, it's about power. You do know I'm from East Oakland. We ain't scared of nothing and nobody. And oftentimes people are afraid to lose their seats of power. But Isaac said, I don't want no power. I'm just trying to serve God. And when you stop chasing power, the Bible says when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God in due season, the Lord is the one who will raise you up. So we find Reverend Benton, Isaac is in the valley. Mess me up. Because God, you, you said stay here. I didn't choose to stay here. I was going to Egypt, Cairo to be exact. I went. But when you are believing God for a victory in a low place, it's some things that you got to do. So the Bible says the first thing Isaac did was he recognized that his father had some wells. In the valley. So he reopened and redug the wells. In other words, he was reclaiming the inheritance that he knew rested on him because of who his father was. Can I help us today? Part of what we struggle with, not only as a church, but even in this city, is we have some wells that our fathers dug that we have let the enemy stop up. Let me tell you about citywide revival. Because some of us grew up in it. It was a big thing for church folk in the city. Everything was shut down for citywide revival. Because E.K. Bailey would do it at Beth Eden in the daytime. And Caesar Clark would do it. I got anybody been to citywide revival? And everybody was in the building, every reformation, every denomination. They weren't worried about the stuff that we worried about. Talking about Pastor Lloyd Farr. 
J.L. Richards, Sylvester Rutledge, M.T. Thompson, Bishop Pinker, past president of the BMU, J. Alfred Smith Sr., who were able to lay their differences aside and come together when it was time to address the issues of Oakland. They dug wells of cooperation and wells of collaboration and wells of advocacy and wells of fellowship. And we let stupidity Block the wells that they... Can I tell you what really happened? The city started giving churches money. I grew up here all my life. And when $10 is on the table, we forget Jesus, Mary, Martha, Peter, Paul, And we opened ourselves up to be manipulated by people who did not have our best interests at heart. We always been feeding people. We always been clothing people. We always been mentoring. And the wells got stopped. But Isaac knew that if I'm going to get my victory, I can't leave my legacy hanging in the balance because Isaac is not just blessed because he Isaac. Isaac is blessed because he the son of Abraham. The blessing was on the father. Do you know you're not sitting in here covered because of you? You got grandmothers and grandfathers and aunts and uncles that gave to the scholarship when they didn't graduate from high school so that you would be able and you can't let their legacy die simply because you blessed when God spoke to Isaac he said I'm going to bless you he said because of Your father, Abraham. Not just because you, you. But somebody came before. We have to go back and reclaim. What we know is ours. And stop letting them divide us over things that we know is not of God. I don't have to agree with your doctrine to stand with you when somebody's son get murdered. But I have to understand what God left me. The Bible says that when he dug out his father's wells, <laughs> the Philistines, because it's always Philistine. Got angry. So he dug another well. Bible says. Now lady, they've been here all along. But when he dug the well and they found water, they said, mm-mm. That's our water. Now you ain't done no labor. You ain't bought no shovel. But the water is ours. I like Isaac. Because he was clearly from San Leandro. Clearly. He was not from where I'm from. Because the Bible says he didn't even fight him. Come on, come on. Mess me up. Because I know y'all been saved all your wonderful life. 
You been in church? We don't promote violence. We stop the violence and increase the peace. But sometimes growing up, We didn't want to because we was church kids. But that's my cousin. And y'all told me if one of them fight. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure where I was. Had to make sure I was in the right place. Because if you came home and you let your cousin get beat up, But Isaac, Pastor Peters, wasn't, he wasn't from where we from. Because he had mastered something that we have to master if we're going to have real victory in the valley. Not only did he know how to reclaim his inheritance and redid wells, but he knew how to resist the enemy. He didn't fight. He didn't quarrel. He didn't throw shade on social media. He didn't get mad and stop showing up. The Bible says he just resisted. Scripture teaches us the weapons of our warfare. Are not carnal. But they're mighty unto God. For the pulling down of strongholds. And could it be we haven't experienced lasting victory because we trying to use weapons we were never designed to use. I mean, mothers of the church that didn't need to say nothing to you, they would come to prayer meeting on a Friday night. They would call your name on Friday. And God would have handled you by Sunday. I got anybody that knows some church mothers where your life was in their head. And sometimes, I'm just talking to preachers now, we fight too much within ourselves, Bishop. When you are not really my enemy. Why are we fighting with Philistines and we blessed? This well don't change nothing. I got a promise from God. And if God gave me this well, guess what? Tell your neighbor you can have it. You, you, you can have this. We have to learn how to resist. Dr. J. Alfred Smith Sr. And I call his name because he was the one that I saw stand unequivocally on what it is that he believed as it related to women. And when I entered ministry, he told me how hurt he would be because he was shut out from the fellowships. And that people would tell other preachers that came to the city, oh, I am gonna tell it, don't, uh, don't associate with him. Because he was too liberal. He was too progressive. And even when he told me his, his face and eyes welled up with, with tears. Because all he wanted was fellowship with his. And he would say, they do stuff I don't, but I don't, I just. Long as we believe in the resurrected Jesus, we should be able to. But here's when I knew what it looked like to resist your enemy. And it's some that already know it. When I accepted my call to ministry, preach my trial sermon was ready for ordination. He planned the service. 
And he invited as the preacher, Dr. M.T. Thompson. Who we knew had diametrically opposed views. But who came with the whole choir was Dr. M.T. Thompson and publicly said, I thank you. Because my daughter was where she needed to be. And after that day, you couldn't tear them apart. If you said something about one, you was talking about the other. But they learned how to resist the naysayers and resist those who, I don't have no time to respond to you. I'm out here trying to say, I don't have no time to deal with you or why I'm called. I'm trying to vaccinate people so they don't die. I don't have no time to deal with what people You got to resist. I want to, but I can't. I could, but I'm not. Ooh, I really should. They sent it for me, Lord. He called. My phone is ringing. He called me. Please let me come. And God says, vengeance is. The Bible says Isaac just moved. And dug another. Because you can talk, you still can't take my gift. You can talk. But you still can't take what God has designed for me. You can talk and try and fight me, but you still can't cancel what God has said is actually for me. The Bible said that when they got angry with him, he just moved. Because not only must you reclaim your inheritance, not only must you resist the enemy, but you got to learn how to rebound. It don't mean you're going to make every basket. But if you don't know how to bounce back from the things that people try, you will never have no victory in the valley. The Bible says he just moved and said, okay, dig right, right here. And the Bible says this time, when he dug the well, he looked around. And it wasn't nobody fighting. So he said, this right here is Rehoboth. Because even though they tried to shut me out right here, God made room for me. And is there anybody that knows God is able when they try and shut you out and shut you down and lock you out? God is able to make room for you. You don't have to cowtail. You don't have to go to lunch. You don't have to give no business card. You don't have to be nobody different than who you are. God will make room. Ask me how I know. Because every time they said you can't come, God said, just hold on. Every time they said, you're not supposed to, God said, just hold on. Because God is able. He ain't got to deliver you right where you are. God is able to make room. Then the Bible says, coming back now. He dug Rehoboth. He said, God will make room for me. Then he traveled a little further to a town called Beersheba. And the Bible says he planted a tree there. 
Here's what messed me up. <laughs> Little did he know Beersheba was the place. That God had showed up for his daddy. And so that God caused you to stay. To bring you back to the original place that the blessing was given in the first place. And just like they wasn't able to take it from them, they not going to be able to take it from you. And the Bible says he settled there. Because sometimes God keeps you in the valley. So you will know that God is not just a God of the hills. But that he can give you victory. Even in your low place. But what the enemy wants to do is to have us think we have to go somewhere else, do something different. Oakland has a rich spiritual heritage. There is not a preacher that is known nationally that did not come here. We have a rich political history. The Black Panther Party was founded here. Kids in Oakland Public School had free lunch because of them. And black churches worked with the Black Panther Party. Not because the Panthers believed in Jesus, they didn't. They had a Marxist ideology. But they had a commitment to helping people. Now, if they could cross boundaries, Dr. Webster, what's wrong with us? The Bible says Isaac was rich. His children were rich. His grandchildren were rich. And I don't just mean materially. But we got a generation that needs to know that we are more than what they say about us on the news. That there is more to us than what they write about in our papers. And maybe if we gave that message, then families would understand that we don't have to kill each other. Because you got an inheritance too. But as long as we stay how we are, we won't have no lasting victory. So I didn't come tonight to just be the first woman. I thank God for it. But the Lord said, tell them that I am able. The same God that kept them, that kept their parents and their grand, the same God that is keeping them right now, that I am able to do anything but fail. But it's a partnership. It's not just God, it's us. And here's what it's going to require. We cannot continue to come to church and be so concerned about us and our issues and our problems. Because our ancestors didn't have nothing. What if Harriet had decided, I'm free and that's enough? What if Fannie Lou Hamer had decided 
that she had to get her blessing. We descended from people who fought for a freedom they would never see. And we got a human that's running for office that is a whole criminal should be under the jail. And if we are not while we shouting and then he got nerve enough he not only selling tennis shoes who that's for but he's selling a bible Dr. Carol The man that stood up and said two Corinthians. <laughs> is selling a Bible? <laughs> but here's what he understands. Come on, help us. All oppression is endorsed with a theology. Meanwhile, we got whales that are stopped up. So here's what I want to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm done. This is historic for more than one reason. Could it be? And let me, let me just call Dr. Carol, come here. Pastor Mike, I see you in the back. Come here. Oh, if you're a pastor in this area, just come, come to the front. We just want, just help me do something. Bishop, please come. Bishop, please come. Doctor, please, please come. No, face, face them. Please come, Lacey. Is that Lacey? I see. First of all, thank you so much for your presence and your support. Bishop Brandon, thank you. Come on. This is just a microcosm of the leadership of faith communities in this area. But standing before you is enough power and authority to transform this whole area. Now let me take it further. I need lady clergy, all of the Reverend Lady clergy that are here, I need you to stand. Thank you, Reverend. I want you to come. Come on, come on. And I want you to join them in faith. Come on, from wherever you are. Now look what just happened. We already had a powerful contract. But when you're not fighting over who should be able to help, of your influence and power just by saying that God is able to use who God wants to use. Created he them male and female. There is therefore now no Jew, no Gentile, no Greek, no male or no female in Christ Jesus. 
Don't you think? This is enough power. This one right here. Y'all know the ceasefire program that stops violence in our city? Scientifically based and violence was reduced. But guess what? It was the brainchild. Come here. God used them. Visionary. Do you hear what I'm saying? So if we gonna get victory in our valley, We have to be willing to say whosoever. Last thing I want to do and I'm done, Sister Brenda. The moms and the families that have been victims of violence, can we pray? That's all I want to do. I just want to, want to pray. But where are they? If they don't mind coming, will you, will you, they'll come with you because they know you. They don't know me, I'm just loud in the mic. Oh Lord, I will live my nights
But Reverend Dr. Renita Weems preached a sermon that said, the only mistake Judas made is that he left before the benediction. It's the only mistake. Had he stuck around, the resurrection would have saved him too. I don't want to be out of order. I know there's someone designated to extend the invitation. I don't know who that is. I will pass the microphone to whomever. Nobody. The president is going to come and extend the invitation to us. Amen. We're going to go together, I promise. I'm not going to sing a song, for this is a progressive night. But I need 30 of you just to get out your seat. You saw the women of God, the men of God come to the altar, but there's some people of God that need to come up here right now and shout glory to God. Get on your feet right now. I don't care if you're crippled. Get up right now. Get up, get up, get up. Get on your feet. Look at somebody and say, dig it out. Come on, say, dig it out. We're not going to be isms, but we're going to be religion. Dig it out. Somebody right now, five of you can come to the altar that are battling with your Christianity. There are five of you that need deliverance right now. Come on. I got permission from the president. Wherever you are right now, you can lift those hands right now and say, Lord, help me. Stretch those hands up right now and say, Lord, help me, help me, help me. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I'm here. I know I'm saved. But I need to be revived. Do you want to be revived right now? Look at somebody say, I need to be revived. Yes, Lord. Is there somebody that wants to be saved? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Where are you? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can be saved right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As you're going to your car. Yes, Lord. Dig out those empty wells. The Lord will give you new wells. God will restore you. God will renew you. And God will revive you. And the church say yes. And the church say yes to the Lord. God bless you. We'll be ready to go in just a moment. We'll be ready to go in just a moment. Please, let's not break rank yet. Amen. Let me just say, God did it. I've got a feeling 
that Oakland will never be the same. Because I found out what the main fear was with women being preachers. Y'all check this out and we're going to get out of here. If you came up in the traditional Baptist church, on Women's Day, there was a woman who brought the message. We made a stand at the side pulpit. She read a text. She gave a subject. And she did her thing. Nobody had a problem with that. They didn't have a problem with what gender spoke. They didn't have a problem with her taking it from the Bible. They didn't have a problem with her even giving a subject. So there's no problem with the woman. There's no problem with the message. And there's no problem with the scripture being read. The problem is we separating over where somebody stands. And let me share this with you. Any preacher, any man that has a problem with a woman delivering God's word, you got a problem with women, period. Sojourner Truth says, Sojourner Truth says that if a woman can carry the word in her womb, then a woman can carry the word in her mouth. So let me, let me, I gotta go. I'm, I, well, can, we, can we give Dr. Jacqueline Thompson another big warm yeah. round of applause? Where is she? Where is Sister Jacqueline Thompson? Y'all, 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 Jack, hold on, hold on. You can't leave yet. Okay, I, I need you up here. I need you up here. Because if I don't, my wife ain't going to let me go home. I, I run the church, but I don't run the crib. You understand? Y'all may say I'm henpecked. Okay, just as long as it's by the right hand, all right? Come on, come on. Sister Wheelock and our, our staff has a presentation yeah, for you. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Dr. Thompson, will you come forward, please? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Y'all give her a clap while she comes, please. Yeah. Amen. Let me say this. First, giving honor to God and to Pastor... Well, Pastor and President Wheelock, and to all of y'all who are sitting before me, it was already ordained for you to be here tonight. Well, Amen. Amen. It was already ordained for you to be the per the first female preach to preach. Amen. In the citywide revival, Amen. Pastor Wheelock was led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. To ask you to come to be the first preacher female preacher, sister, a woman of God. Uh -huh. And I want to allow, allow my, my y'all come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. I want them to see you all. On behalf of all of my sisters here, not just the committee, but all of my sisters here, amen. We want to present these lovely flowers to you, to such a powerful and lovely woman of God. Amen, amen, amen. I was totally blessed, amen. I was really, really blessed from your sermon tonight, as I have always been. And may God bless you. May God bless your walk. 
May God bless your talk. May God bless your life. May God bless your church. As you move forward in this life, may God continue to, ex to exercise you, grow you as you continue to do work for him. God bless you. Praise his name. All right, all right. Now look, we've got one more night. On tomorrow night, the Reverend Michael Fisher, all the way from Los Angeles. You don't want to miss him. We've had an excellent revival. We thank you so much. But please come back on tomorrow night. If our hearts and our minds are clear, we've had a marvelous time. Thank you so much. All right. Pastor Marty, people wants me to let y'all know it's casual tomorrow, but I'm probably going to be suited and booted. You understand? Shall we stand? He's sweet, I know. You know that? When we dismiss, please move your cars immediately from across the street if you're parked over there at the school. On a hot storm cloud may rise. I know y'all know that. Strong wind may blow. But I What you gonna tell them, y'all, that I found a say? Oh, and he's sweet. Now let somebody hear y'all across the street who over there and help her tell her he's sweet. Oh, Lord, he Oh, Lord, star Y'all believe that, don't you? May rise Oh, and strong Thank all the pastors and preachers and all of you from all over the city. Oh, but I oh I tell you where wherever Todd may go. Y'all don't mind if I testify, do you? That I have found the same. Oh, and he's sweet, I know. God bless you. Look at the person next to you. I love you whether you like it or not. Drive home carefully. See you tomorrow night. He's sweet, I know. <laughs>